Hello everyone, I'm Nazarat Fatima and you're watching Live Law. As you know, the abrogation of Article 370 has been challenged in the Supreme Court on various grounds. And in relation to the same, we have created a series of videos on the arguments made by senior advocates, namely Mr. Kapil Sibal, Mr. Gopal Subramanyam, Mr. Zafar Shah, Mr. Rajiv Dhawan, Mr. Dushan Dave, Mr. Chandar Uday Singh, Mr. Dinesh Dwedi, Mr. Sanjay Parikh and Mr. P.C. Sen. In order to understand the case better, please go through the videos made previously. Today in this video, we will cover some major arguments made by senior advocates Ms. Nitya Ramakrishnan, Mr. Gopal Sankarnarayan and Ms. Menika Guruswami. We have covered some of the major arguments. However, it is suggested that you also go through the articles which contain a detailed and elaborate version of the arguments made by the counsel and the Supreme Court. The link to these articles is given in the description box. Senior advocate Nitya Ramakrishnan, appearing from one of the petitioners while challenging the decision to abrogate Article 370, mentioned that primarily the governor of JNK had no knowledge about the center's decisions on August 4, 2019. Not only this, she also shared a portion from former Jammu and Kashmir governor Satyapal Malik's interview. He had said in the interview, and I quote, I did not know anything. I was merely called by the home minister one day prior saying, Satyapal, I am sending a letter tomorrow morning. Please get it passed by a committee before 11 tomorrow and send it to me. Ms. Ramakrishnan asked the court, the governor had no idea on the night of August 4 of what was coming and he was given concurrence like this. The petitioners here relied upon the governor's interview to argue that there was no effective concurrence given by the governor to abrogate Article 370, which was necessary to abrogate the special status of JNK under Article 370, as the concurrence of the government of JNK is needed. She said that as per Constitutional Order 272, the government of JNK is construed to mean the governor of JNK. But in this case, there was no concurrence as can be inferred from the then governor's interview. Moreover, Ms. Ramakrishnan said that a newspaper report is not an evidence by itself without corroboration. She said, and I quote, but this is a video interview given by the governor who dissolved the public assembly. The whole world was aware of this. We cannot sit in an ivory tower and behave that it never happened. Let's now go into a few arguments made by senior advocate Gopal Sankar Narayan. Mr. Sankar Narayan emphasized that it is not merely about Kashmir, but about the broader implications for the constitution and the potential abuse of executive power. He said, and I quote, Whenever anything that approaches or encroaches upon our right starts, you must nip it in the bud. This is an encroachment on something we cherish the most, our constitution. Kashmir is just an avenue. Following this argument, he discussed the potential misuse of Article 367, a provision related to interpretation clauses within the constitution. He said this in context of how the constitutional order 272 issued by the president on August 5, 2019 amended the definition clauses in Article 367 to hold that constituent assembly of JNK would mean the legislative assembly of JNK and government of JNK would be construed as the governor of JNK. He said, and I quote, for example, the word person in Article 21 can be interpreted to mean person accused of an offence. In 367, I'll put an interpretation clause and say person means person accused of an offence. So all other rights under Article 21 are out of the window. Moreover, Mr. Shankar Narayan highlighted that following of constitutional processes is important in a democracy. He said, and I quote, the executive is not the sovereign. The people are the sovereigns in our constitution. Let there be no doubt about that. He also said an exclamation that if they're allowed to do this, heaven knows what else they would do. While concluding the arguments for petitioners, Mr. Shankar Narayan used certain extreme examples to argue that upholding the center's actions can set a precedent for great mischief, whereby constitutional processes can be circumvented by simply changing the definition clauses under Article 367 instead of following the amendment process under Article 368. Now let's come to Ms. Menika Guruswami's arguments. She said that it was envisaged by the founders for JNK integrated with Union of India and it's not just Article 1 and Article 370 which is part of that constitutional intention. She said that it's much more than that. It's the specific provisions of JNK constitution, sections 4 and 5. In addition to this, she said that such territorial integrity was not promised to any other state and this was all part of the founding intention. While also referring to sections 4 and 5 of the JNK constitution, she said that abrogation of article 370 has vitiated the unique internal sovereignty guaranteed by both the JNK constitution and India. 
She said that keeping the residuary powers of state with JNK is unique to JNK and this brand of sovereignty is unique to JNK. Ms. Guruswamy also referred to constituent assembly debates and said that the abrogation of Article 370 and the subsequent reorganization act by abolishing the bicameralism legislature of the state has further violated the unique autonomy secured by JNK. That's all about it for now. We hope you like our content. If you do, please like and share our videos. Also subscribe to our channel on YouTube and don't forget to press the bell icon for notifications. Thank you for watching.